how much does the way Jimmy went out to bat influence or change or affect the English bowlers, you know, missing their line and length? When you go out and you have a player like that, does that throw you a little bit? Yeah, well, that's why I was confused in, in, the, in the game against Pakistan, how he went up the order and batted at four, because we know how destructive he is at the death. And he came out today and hit the ball purely from ball one. As soon as you miss Chris Jordan, he didn't know where to go, and he's a very experienced bowler. So we saw Captain Morgan coming and having a chat. Then it was Butler, and then there was both of them together. And once, I think, Mitch, you, you know, as a bowler, if you've got a couple of messages coming in and you're running into bowl, you, you're not too sure what your plan is. Well, if, if Jordan was clear and, and what he was like, if he had been honest with the captain at that time and said, look, I've tried to get through here, um, I've just missed and he's hit me for six, it was a bad ball, then there wouldn't be the to and throw between like a keeper and a captain because um, then they're thinking, OK, you've just not executed. And as a bowler, you've got to be honest with that kind of stuff. You can say, I haven't executed, I'm just going to execute this next delivery. A superb performance from the Black Caps to win by five wickets. So let's cross now to the UAE Black Caps batting coach, Luke Ronke. What a superb victory. Congratulations. Uh, it was amazing. Like what the, the guys did, there was a bit of a tough period from sort of through the middle there, but the way we finished off, I don't think I've ever seen the Black Caps team do it. To get 57, I think it was, off three overs there to finish that off was, it was an amazing sight, and being in the dugout there was, was fantastic. Boys jumping around, a few sweaty palms and things like that, but, but an amazing finish to a game of cricket for us. Fair amount of sweat here too, I think, Ronks, it'd be fair to say. Um, but you looked very calm throughout, actually. I was very impressed. Uh, you, you're a calming influence, we know that. But um, on the inside, were you uh, uh, flattened around a bit? Uh, I'm not too bad. I, I, I can feel my palms starting to get a bit sweaty at times. I think that's when I know things are just ticking along a bit more than what they probably would normally. So, um, But like you said, I try and stay as calm as I possibly can and, and don't want to, um, I guess, chuck my emotions and, and nervousness onto the guys coming in. As you know, Bolty gets pretty nervous. So if he sees that, he's really in some trouble. <laughs> Rox, um, you know, talking about calming uh, influences, Glenn Phillips at the halfway stage, he came out and said we're going to do it in 19 overs. I'm pre pretty sure that wasn't your <laughs> particular batting plan. <laughs> well, you never... I'd love to finish in the 19th every time, but, I mean, the way it worked out, he actually did tell me before, GP, that, that Darrell was really calm when he went out there and he actually did say, like, we've got this, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Um, sort of had an understanding of who was going to bowl and and probably the, the way they were going to bowl at us. Uh, and then some of those shots at the end. Obviously, Nish was, was fantastic to, to take a bit of pump off Daryl there and sort of let Daryl have a bit of a breather. But then some of those shots Daryl played at the end as well were, were magnificent. And, and to get the win, to bat the whole way through for us, Daryl was, was fantastic. Who would you rather take on in the final ronks, Pakistan or Australia? Don't care. We're in the final, so that's the main thing. Yoo yes, we are. Uh, Luke Ronke, I want to thank you so much for your time tonight. Go and celebrate with the lads. We look forward to seeing you at the final. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. So awesome to hear from the Black Caps batting coach there. We are now going to go to the Hawks Bay with a man who I am sure is very happy after that Black Caps victory. Good morning, Ian Smith. You said we can do it. One more win. Yeah, look, I, I'm happy, but I'm not surprised. Uh, I've I backed this this bunch uh, for quite some time uh, over all forms of the game. So, uh, you know, it's almost a bit of fate about the whole thing for me, uh, and not surprising fate. Uh, it was our it, it's our turn. Uh, I just think it's our turn against England. Uh, there are a number of things that, that that we did brilliantly, but we just went about our work. You know, I mean, how many runs did we save in the field again with our commitment? Uh, you know, even when things didn't go perfectly with the ball. We've still got this belief that uh, we didn't have years and years ago that we can handle most situations. And you lose Martin Guptill, you, use, you lose Kane Williamson, and most people reach for their remotes at home and say, well, that's that, done and dusted. I might as well get a couple of hours sleep and they'll read about it in the morning. But I, I don't think you do that with this team anymore. I, I, don't, I really don't. And, you know, there's a number of really key innings in here. Uh, you've highlighted Jimmy Nish, and for me, that's the spark. That was the spark that, that crea created the opportunity at the end. But don't forget, don't forget Conway's innings to, to sort of bring round you know, a situation that was not looking too good. Uh, and then, of course, you come to Daryl Mitchell, who, who uh, you know, um, a month ago was never going to perform this role. He just simply wasn't. Um, and he's done it brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. Um, and, and if you look, it's not the first time, though, he's handled the, the pressure. It's not the first time 
he's handled the occasion. You and I have bandied around this conversation about who should open with Martin Guptill. Should it be Devin Conway, left-hand, right-hand combo? But Gary Stead now looks like an absolute genius for putting uh, Daryl Mitchell up the top there. Yeah, well, look, look I know it's, it's early days. We haven't won the damn thing. Um, but he's a, a real achiever, Gary Stead. Uh, there's, there's blokes sitting on your couch that have played uh, against him, with him and under him as a coach, I would imagine. So they know a, a little bit more about his character than I do. But, I mean, if he walked in the local pub, I mean, if Ian Foster walked in the local pub, everyone knows him. If Gary Stead walked in the local pub, and unless it was his own local, no one would know. Uh, I mean, he's just that kind of guy who just gets it done behind the scenes. Um, and, and he's moulded together a unit that have got belief, and that is the key in these situations, to believe you can do it from anywhere, and they were nowhere at one point. So uh, that is, that's what I like about it. You, you throw him in there, you throw the balance, you, you throw the balance of Shane Bond and Shane Jurgens, and they've really picked a good backroom staff here. I mean, they can't do it on the field, but they can do everything they can to get them ready and confident enough to walk across that white line. Uh, and then you, you throw in uh, Luke Ronke, who you've just talked to, been there, done that kind of thing. Uh, and, and, and the balance, the balance that they've got at the moment, uh, off the field and on the field, is nigh on perfect. You're right, Smitty, absolutely. The support staff's uh, a key part of that side, um, gives uh, players on the field the opportunity to perform. Um, just quickly, I'd love to know your thoughts on who you would like to meet in the final. Well, I know who I'd like to beat, Mitch. Uh, I'm a little bit <laughs> like Ronks. Uh, I don't really care who we win, because, uh, who we play, because I think we'll beat them both. I really do. Uh, it's just a question of uh, of when and how much. But I, I, I'm super confident about it. I'll be backing them to the hilt. Uh, but I know who, uh, if you talk about retribution, if you talk about payback over the years, some of us have been popping over the Tasman and being bullied for about uh, three, de three or four decades now. Uh, this would be a good one, a really good one uh, for uh, us to beat. So if there is to be a loser that we play against, please let it be the, the ones in yellow from my point of view. Well, you heard it here first. Ian Smith says we're going to win the whole damn thing. Smithy, I want to thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, love your thoughts there, really do. And we'll uh, catch up with you very soon. Sure. So I, I love the confidence. I'm thrilled to hear that. That's super exciting. And I guess the way you look at um, how New Zealand have conducted themselves in this tournament, he's dead right. They could and should win this. Well, I, I think you have to take confidence because England were the best side coming into this tournament. Uh, I think that's probably the main thing. Like, over, uh, obviously, we need to pull it back a little bit now that we have been in probably the favourites for the whole tournament and then reconvene and, and, and look going forward. But, I mean, I'm, I'm confident. Munners, I'm sure you're confident. Um, and I'm uh, exactly with Smitty um, from 2015 World Cup, which we were there and I really want to see a little bit of payback for the Aussies if we meet them in the final. You, you were there in 2019, Colin. I mean, you remember that whole thing. It, it was a lot. And it's great to see that, clearly, New Zealand have learnt how to win in these big moments. Yeah, it's, it's like Mitch said, you know, the guys that have been there, we want to see some retribution, and, and the boys have done it. They would have gone into this game not thinking about 2019 at all. Um, and I think what makes us, I think, favourites going into the final is the way that we've adjusted to different conditions. We've been smart, we've done our scouting, we've done everything really, really well, and I think we've been led really well by Kane. So, yeah, I think everything's falling into place. Um, I wouldn't be as confident as Smithy, but I am pretty confident. Tomorrow morning is semi-final number two, and it is Pakistan, the inform and favourites. Pakistan taking on Australia. Three o'clock, a first ball bold, Sky Sport 3. Um, Colin Munro, who's your money on? I would like to say Australia, uh, so we can play them in the final, but I think Pakistan in those conditions will be a bit too strong. Mitchell, what about you? Yeah, Pakistan in those conditions, yeah, they know how to get through to 150 and be able to defend it. Um, so I think they'll probably have the, the wood over Australia, but geez, I'd love, like Smitty said, to be in a victory uh, winning final against the Aussies.